My father, who is a general in the Afghan army, is brutally killed by the Taliban. Ten years old, with my mom and four sisters, in a place where you can't go to school, go to work, or have a normal life. It's a place where dreams are not allowed. My mom is a really smart lady, so she finds a way to get us out from there. Oh, after two months, I'm behind this truck. Been here for 50 hours. It's dark, cold, and I'm really scared. Most of all, I'm really hungry. We are unloaded in a little village, Asgard's Denmark, where this police officer sees that we're hungry. So he gets us some bananas, milk, and toast. A small gesture. But this is the kindest thing anyone ever done to me. And bananas never tasted this good. A couple of weeks gone, and I'm at this refugee camp. We're surrounded by woods, and just beside the camp, there's these, this football club with these amazing football fields and goals. So every day after school, I find myself looking at other kids playing football. At the beginning, I'm far away behind the fences, but for each day, I'm getting closer and closer and closer. This is the first time that I see girls play football. I'm shocked, but amazed. There's in particular one girl, she's skinny and tiny, way tinier than everyone else, has this weird hair thing going on for her, and she's amazing. The stuff she does with the ball is unbelievable. And now I want to play this game. And for each day, this feeling, like, this grows bigger. Like, I, I feel it so badly. Just, there's just one issue. We don't have a ball. And I assume that's crucial, huh, to play football. <laughs> I've noticed, though, when they're shooting drills, some of the balls are not found again. So I tell some of my friends, we gather, we take two plastic bags, and then we go for a ball hunt. Five, six hours later, with some scratches, and here we are, with not one, not two, but 23 freaking balls. <laughs> but this doesn't feel right, you know I mean? No, we can't keep these balls, it's not ours. So, go back to the club, we show the guy our findings, and I'm like, and he takes some of the new ones, but let us keep the old and deflated ones. We pump the ball, and guess what? They're actually proper balls. Everyone is excited, going crazy, ecstatic. I've never been this happy. Um, every night when my head hits the pillow, I dream of becoming a footballer. You know, when you're walking out this player tunnel and the grass is perfect and fans are going crazy, lights, and you're able to, I'm doing all this stuff, like juggling, doing the skills like Ronaldo, I'm bending ball like Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> and during the days, I play, I train, I practice. It's almost like an obsession. This is the first time in my life that something is pulling me forward. But there's also always been something that has pushed me. I'm in high school and tired of being poor. Actually, I hated it. Hate the fact that my mom's mom worked three jobs and we still don't have enough food. I hate the fact that I don't have my own stuff. I hate, well, it's not because I want fancy stuff. I just want to have enough food and just some new shoes. So, I tell my little sister, we need to do something. So now, here we are on, on my old rusty bike. When I say old rusty, I mean ancient. It was, 
It was so old, had one gear, no brakes, no lights. It was way too small for me. And two times a week, we would wake up middle of the night, my little sister behind me. Did not matter if it snowed, rain, or we were too tired. Her behind me with two bags of newspapers, and we would bike half the sea around to deliver newspapers. A year after, we buy, I buy my first scooter. It means one thing, more roots. A while later, I've got enough money to buy my own news kiosk. And the best part of this is that mom, my mom doesn't have to work three jobs anymore. And Diana and I, we can eat ice cream every Friday. I'm 19 years old, standing in my study council's office. I've just finished my first semester in med school. Yes, I'm going to be a doctor. I want to help people. I want to make a difference. I want to have an impact on people's life. The same way as the police officer had on mine. But as issue, I've just been selected for the Danish nationality camp for the first time. And the camp and the exams are at the same time. So I'm trying to explain my problem to this person sitting behind, behind the desk. She looks at me as if I'm stupid. And she's like, well, what's the problem? You have to choose where you want to be, a doctor or a footballer? I'm like, well, I don't get it. This pisses me off her attitude towards me. Why is she? telling you what's possible, what's not possible. Why is she killing my dreams? I'll show you what's possible. 10 years after, you're standing in front of you guys, I've played 85 national team games. <laughs> I'm one semester semester from being a doctor. <laughs> and last year, I was chosen the Dane of the Year. Yeah, me, <laughs> Dane of the Year. <laughs> I'm not telling you guys to cheer or clap for me, even though I don't mind it. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you the story to show, share the importance of this feeling or the nod that you get. I call it a spark, yeah? It can be in the shape of love, the love for the game that always has pulled me forward in life. Or it can be in the shape of a push. When someone is trying to push you down and you refuse and you push out of it. When life puts you in situations you do not want to be in, you feel it right here. This feeling that grows bigger, this knot, that's how it starts. Not the spark, it's not discriminate. It doesn't matter what you've been through, who you are, where you're going. Everyone gets it. So when you get it, use it as a fuel for your dreams. Use it to dream, and when you dream, dream big.